Hi everybody, welcome back to um, part two of my playlist on popular books on technology. And um, wrong page there. So I'd like to start with um, some books on um, atomic bombs and nuclear weapons, which there's no shortage. As I remember in the, uh, I started a series with classic books on Richard Rhodes' book, The Making of the Atomic Bomb. He followed it up with Dark Sun on the hydrogen bomb. So it's uh, not quite as good as the first book that he wrote, but still very readable. Um, a next book is by somebody who was actually involved in um, designing these bombs and wrote a personal memoir. It's called Building the H-Bar Bomb by Kenneth Ford. And... Um, so this is sort of interesting. He talks about all the people like Teller, Fermi, Ulam, von Neumann, etc. Now another interesting book is uh, One Point Safe. And this is um, mostly about um, when the Soviet Union collapsed, what, you know, all those nuclear weapons and what, what was done and all kinds of things as to how, you know, it was guarded and what conditions and treaties were made and everything. So this is well worth reading. Um, this book, this Command and Control, that's about to come up, I really love. It has just about all the accidents. It's scary as hell to read about all these accidents. That one in Arkansas where that 9 megaton trident, um, not trident, 9 mega, megaton, um, maybe it was a Triant missile, blew up in a silo and everything that happened. They made a movie on it and everything. But it's a fantastic book, and he covers all the accidents. And uh, it's really scary, let's put it that way. Um, so it's um, all these things about they're safe and everything. Don't you believe it? Um, this book, The Truth About Sher Chernobyl is about the accident there, and it was written, I believe, by a Russian, and he covers all the um, cover-ups and all that kind of stuff. Gives supposedly a complete account of the a accident. There are some other books that also cover Chernobyl. Um, continuing on, there's a nice book that came out recently by Martin Sherwin, sort of like an update on what really happened at the Cuban Missile Crisis. And, um, you know, more is coming out every year. Certainly at the time, the U.S. was unaware that there were Russian brigades which were armed with uh, tactical nuclear weapons in Cuba and were ordered to use them if the U.S. invaded. So, um, you know, if, if Nixon had been president and there would have been an invasion, who knows what would have happened. Okay. Um, this next book is a classic book. It's written by a, a physicist who discovered, I think he won a Nobel Prize for spin. And he was also put in charge at the end of uh, World War II of tracking down all the Nazi scientists in uh, Europe and seeing how far they got and, and so on. So it's a really interesting read. It's sort of like part espionage, part physics, and part um, evaluation on this important mission. And it's written by a physicist. Um, this next book on plutonium is written by this great writer for the New Yorker, Jeremy Bernstein, who was also a physicist and became a writer. And uh, it's a very interesting book on plutonium, how it's made, all the problems, etc. So um, it's a good book on the history of plutonium. Next book is on uh, Los Alamos and the National Laboratory. This uh, author, Joanne Schroer, wrote, wrote a uh, book on um, everything that happens inside of Los Alamos. So if you want to learn more about that. Now turning to um, other books that are sort of uh, military-based, but more like history and everything. I recently read this book on firepower. It's about how the complete history of warfare and how we've gone from, you know, various types of uh, guns and rifles and cannons all the way up to AR-15 and, and so on. So it's a complete evolution of wep weaponry in warfare. And um, if, you, if you're into that thing, this is a very good book. 
I also read this book called The Gun, which is about the um, specific gun, the Russian rifle that was used in Afghanistan, the AK-47, that uh, is so effective and everything. And he goes through the whole history of how this gun was designed, how it was used, how it was trafficked, how it was traded. So, uh, well worth reading. Um, this book on Blinds Man Bluff is about submarine espionage and warfare. And um, again, if you're into the military history and everything, this is it reads like a spy thriller, but it's very interesting on the technology involved. Um, the Yard is a book about, I think, at Lockheed, where they, uh, the guy worked. A, um, nope, I'm thinking of another book. So it was something in Maine where they uh, built ships, and he talks all about his year there building and the technology involved at the Bath Iron Works. Um, the Jasons is a very uh, interesting group. There's, I happen to, my advisor at Caltech, Steve Coonan, was uh, in the Jasons, and a lot of prominent physicists are like part of them, and they tackle all kinds of real difficult problems, you know, Star Wars, missile defense, electronic battlefield, in addition to all these things on nuclear weapons and climate crisis and everything. So they're really like the consultants, the consulting physicists to the U.S. government. This is the book that I thought earlier. This is on Lockheed Martin and a personal memoir of somebody there and, and all the things, all that advanced technology and um, stealth aircraft and everything that they designed. Now I'd like to um, go over into sort of crypt cryptography a little bit and and hackers. This is called Secret and Lies. This is by Bruce Schneiner, who's like the premier expert on um, digital security. He wrote a real long book technical book on um, cryptography and this was sort of his popular book um, approach but he's well worth reading and then there's this old book I have I think I can't remember when it was published let me see when it was published okay 1995 um, it was Masters of Deception, the gang that ruled cyberspace, you know, rival gangs of hackers. So that if you're into that stuff on hacking and all the things that are involved in, in the history, that's a good book. And then I think this is an even more famous book, The uh, Cuckoo's Egg, by, was republished by Cliff Stoll, about um, all these hackers and computer espionage on the Internet, especially in the early days of the Internet. Um, this book is about um, a girl who like made a discovery in cryptography. She's a mathematician or became a mathematician. So um, it's well worth reading about, you know, how I think she was like 18 or 19 and she made this discovery in cryptography. It's pretty amazing. Now I'm uh, going to go into uh, books on computers. I think Daniel Hillis worked with Feynman on that company, the, the Connection Machine or something like that. Anyway, he wrote a book on computers about how they work and everything, and it's a short book, but it's really interesting, called The Pattern on the Stone. He has some real good analogies in there. And then um, this book is a... Um, book on um, essays on computers and it describes thinkers on what they um, think about you know all their viewpoints let me see if I can get a list of the people that are in this book um, so you have Carver Mead I'm familiar with him Nathan Meinhold he was the guy at Microsoft who also went into the cooking uh, William Perry was the Secretary of Defense and Reed Hunt is, um, I can't remember which company he's involved with. It might be Netflix or something. But yeah, anyway, all these guys give their, it's like an essay book, and they give their thoughts. 
It's well worth reading. Another book that interviews like 15 great computer scientists out of their minds, it's called. And this is also... I like reading these books because you get different perspectives from, from some great people. But you have like John Backus, John... All these just... Dykstra, all these like expert Donald Newth in in computers, that Leslie Lampard who developed LaTeX, Stephen Cook with the uh, algorithm, Mythical Man Month, and uh, Daniel Hills I just mentioned him, and Figurebound the guy who discovered uh, the first guy who really did chaos. So um, this is ver- well worth reading. Now here's a book called Dreaming in Code, where this guy writes about, you know, software and how it's created and everything, and I think it focuses on uh, certain teams, and it's it's a history book, but it's really interesting. Um, this book is about code, the hidden language of computer software and hardware. It's mostly, um, it's just a... Um, a book for someone who's not that familiar with the whole computer industry and coding software industry. Um, so it talks, it's got a lot of things in here. And um, this is another one of those books where they talk to like 20 cognitive scientists and they interview them. And again, I, I really like these books because they're people that I know. I, th- I th- Churchland I know is is a philosopher. Daniel Bennett is Dennett has written a lot of books on, you know, artificial intelligence and um, consciousness. Um, but I'm less familiar with all of these people. Hillary Putnam I know is a ph- philosopher. Uh, John Searle is a philosopher. So you get a lot. Herbert Simon I know. You get a lot of philosophy and computers and, um, you know, just a lot of things. Um, And um, another book like this, um, The Creative Mind, Myths and Mechanisms, is uh, about creativity and how people come up with it. And um, another book along that along those lines is Ingenious, a Crash Course on Creativity. If you want to learn about all these things and what research has been done on creativity and so on. Um, This is a book, it's a little out of place, but and it's old, but it was when Artificial Life first came out. This guy wrote about the book and whether it's possible and so on. So a lot's happened since then, but this might be a good read if you want to get the history of the machine. This is another book by... um, Marvin Minsky, who's like, you know, a god in in many areas of artificial intelligence and the research, and he gives his um, viewpoints. Um, And this is a book that's written by all these math people who create software. And um, mostly it's in the early history of the computer field, but uh, again, it's well worth reading if you're interested in that. This is a recent book on memory, and uh, it's really interesting, Moonwalking with Einstein, like how they have these memory competitions and how people win them and what they do in them. Um, This was a book from a long time ago, The Nudist on the Late Shift. It's a wonderful title, but this guy, Poe Bronson, is a really good author, and he writes all about, um, you know, Silicon Valley. So these books are about like all the things that happen in Silicon Valley. Uh, the new, new thing, you know, Michael Lewis is like probably the best writer in the country on these kind of books. And he talks about Silicon Valley. And then there's this book, um, The Monk and the Riddle. Um, I think it's by somebody who was a uh, Randy Commissar. He was an entrepreneur and various other things. Again, it's sort of like a Silicon Valley perspective. And here is finally another book about the Internet Wars and who prevails in Silicon Valley and how. 
greed and glory. So um, that will finish most of my books on technology. I think I'm going to make um, one more playlist. I thought this would be the last, but I think I'm going to make a playlist on business books, which most of them overlap these books because they're by mostly businesses and, so, and computers and you know venture capital and everything. But that will be the next playlist that I'll get to. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.